Hello, uh, this is Catherine Brooks uh, with Trimex Solutions. I'm an applications engineer that specializes with Enterprise PDM. Uh, thanks for taking some time out of your day today to take a look at creating an engineering workflow from scratch to kind of go over what I'm going to be doing today. Um, I'm going to be creating a category to assign a specific type of file to an engineering files category. I'm going to be creating a new workflow that uses that category to direct files into this engineering workflow. Uh, I'll be creating the states and transitions for that workflow as well as creating some uh, revision components to create an alpha revision scheme to assign to that workflow. And last but not least, I'll be applying some notifications to that uh, specific workflow. Uh, we'll also be testing and verifying that everything is working properly. So creating a workflow from scratch. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new category. So maybe this is going to be my engineering files category. It's all CAD files could be the description. Categories are basically a way to classify documents. They aren't necessary, but you can use them if you would like. I'm going to use my percent sign here, uh, which is my wild card, and I'm basically stating that all SLD files, which would be .sldprt, .sldasm, and .sldDRW, parts, assemblies, and drawings for SolidWorks, should be uh, captured and applied in engineering files category when it's checked in. I'm also going to do one more file path here. Maybe I'm expecting to have uh, just a few DWG files uh, that are going to be added into the vault. So both of these conditions are in an OR folder because it needs to be an SLD file or a DWG file. Click OK and now I need to create my new workflow. Maybe this is the ENG approval process. And we can say a description of approval process for engineering files. Never said I was the greatest typist. There we go. Oops, no. One more time. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to use that category. So my condition is that it has to be an engineering files category, um, file that belongs to that category before it can be placed into this workflow. When I go ahead and click OK, we get an initial state. Every single workflow must have at least one state, and one single state must be signified as the initial state. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this initial state to work in process. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add maybe the engineering and the project managers and say that uh, everyone should have almost all the, all the different permissions here, but maybe engineering isn't allowed to destroy, increment the revision of a file, or permit or deny group level access. Otherwise, they have all the other permissions. Project managers have everything, and of course the admin should have everything. Okay, let's go ahead and put in another state approximately here. So I click on my state button click somewhere within the field approximately and I can say that this might be pending approval. Uh, this is not going to be the initial state but let's go ahead and add the engineering group and say that engineering should at least be able to read the file contents. They can't really do anything else here. Really up to you if you want to change that. And then of course project managers should have all permissions and we know the admin does have all permissions here by default which is what we want approximately move it into place and uh, maybe we need another state maybe this is released and again we want to make sure that at least for the engineering group they are able to read the file contents and then maybe for project managers we give them permissions to do everything now that we've got our states, we need some transitions that move from state to state, uh, which kind of rounds out our 
workflow here. So I'm going to click on my new transition button and you'll see that we have a source tip or a tool tip stating to select the source state. So where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from work and process and then select destination state is going to appear as soon as I click. And so basically this is saying click where it's going to. So where is it coming from? Where is it going to? Well, it's going to pending approval. So we can maybe call this uh, submit for approval. And we're going to go ahead and allow all users, all groups, permissions to use this. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's clean that up a little bit. Maybe we need another transition. This time around, I'm going to use my right click method, new transition from pending approval to released. So we're going to say approved. Great job. It has been approved. Engineering project managers. Click OK. And again, I'm going to let uh, actually I'm not going to let engineering approve their own work. So I'm just going to have the project managers the, have the ability to use this transition. So basically what we have so far is that engineers are able to do whatever they want essentially with files that are in a work in process state. Engineers and managers are allowed to submit the files for approval. Once they get to pending approval, engineering can see the files, but they cannot make any edits or changes to the file. Project managers, on the other hand, do have the ability to make changes to those files. In order to approve a document, you must be in the project manager's uh, group. Otherwise, if you're an engineer, you cannot approve your files or anyone else's files. So let's say that uh, we want to add another transition here to reject. We have the ability to approve, but what if there's a problem with the file? We also want to be able to reject. So I'm going to select the source state being approval, and this time I'm going to choose the destination state as work in process, and we can say rejected here. Who should be able to reject it? Well, project managers, probably a good idea. Now let's move it over to the side so it's a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier to see. Okay, now that we have our loop back in order for a file to be rejected and to go back into the work in process state, let's also create a loop back from release to work in process. That is essentially our new release. Maybe there's an ECO or an ECN or an ECR um, that's been applied to these engineering files and they needed a, an ability to move back to work in process. So I'm going to click my source state and my destination state, which is work in process, and maybe we'll call this new release. Um, for permissions, we're going to go ahead and let engineering and project managers move these files to the work in process state using the new release transition. Last but not least, maybe we need to have a bypass. Maybe we want to be able to take files from work in process straight to released. Probably a good idea, uh, which would essentially be our no approval required. And again, probably want to restrict this one to maybe just project managers and the admin. Let's go ahead and move it out so that it's a little bit easier to see and understand again. Let's move that up and this one down. Looks pretty good. We've got a fully defined workflow here with three different states, multiple different transitions. Let's go ahead and save. Uh, right now we know that the admin has permissions to do everything in here. Um, but before we test or continue on, we need to make sure that we put in a new revision. So let's go ahead and create a new revision component. This will be my alpha component. My format string that I'm going to be using is capitalized uh, alpha scheme, A, B, C, all the way to Z. And now I need to create a new revision number called alpha revision number. Of course, this can be called anything I would like, but to make it easier in myself, I'm going to say that it is my alpha revision number. So now I've got my alpha revision number and an old numeric revision number that I'm not going to use. And let's go back into the workflow. Now, 
I essentially want files to bump up in the revision when they get to a release state. So I'm going to apply my revision number here, alpha revision number, with my alpha component. And I'm going to say increment by one. Now any transition that leads into that state that I applied the revision number to, I need to tell it to actually bump up the revision. It's basically saying, hey, look ahead, see how much I need to bump up, and then actually do the bump in the revision. So I'm going to start with my approved, and I'm going to put in a new action. So I'm going to say that this is going to increment revision for all files that go through this particular uh, workflow. So I have this ability to ink rev. Now if I wanted to, I could restrict this specifically for SLD DRW files or any other file extension that I want, but I'm not going to. I'm going to run this for all files. Uh, but bumping a revision is a two-part process. We want to increment the revision in the database tables, which is actually what this is doing, but we also want to increment the revision that shows up on the data card. So we can say um, set revision variable on data card. This description is basically for, for my information. It's not really shown anywhere else but right here. So my variable that I'm setting is revision. And what is my value? Well, it should be the next available revision. And I, again, I'm running this for files, not just for specific files. So it's all files. So I'm incrementing revision, and I am setting the variable here. Looks pretty good. But I need to apply the same settings to the no approval required. So let's go over to my actions. This time I'm going to set rev variable, shortening it this time around. Setting the variable. Which variable am I setting? Revision. And what value? Next revision. OK. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and ink rev. Again, I'm shortening this. Stands for incrementing revision. And I'm going to click OK. So now I've got my actions to increment the revision. Looks pretty good. I'm also setting the variable inside of the data card. Let's go ahead and save. And now, last but not least, we want to apply some notifications to our transitions here. So I'm going to go into my submit for approval to the notifications, and I'm going to add a folder notification for the entire root folder. Not much going on inside of my vault because this is a new vault. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to say that my recipients are going to be the project managers. I probably want to let them know that we have some files that uh, have been submitted for approval. So I can say that this is a dynamic selection, or I can just leave it as um, a group, which I'm going to leave it as a group. OK. So when a file goes from work in process to pending approval using the submit for approval, we get a notification to the managers group, project managers group, stating, hey, something's gone into a pending approval. Maybe I want to put in a state notification stating that uh, when a file has been delayed in this pending approval state for so many days, I want to re-notify the engineering managers or the project manager group. So trigger after being three days in state pending approval and then resend every two days. Then my recipients is going to be the project manager group. OK. Let's go ahead and go to the rejected transition. Maybe I want to notify the last state modifier. Or I can specifically state uh, the engineering group with a dynamic selection if there is more than one. I don't have very many <laughs> engineering group users. There we go. Dynamic selection here. So I am basically stating here that when a file goes from pending approval to work in process, in other words, rejected, we want to have a dynamic selection of the engineering group to notify them or the individual uh, that a file has been rejected. Last but not least, let's go ahead and put in a notification 
for the approved state, and I'm only putting in a few different notifications here. For both engineering and project managers, we want to notify everyone that a file has been approved. No approval required. Don't necessarily need to have one of those set in place. New release. Again, if you want to, you can always apply a notification for this one as well, but in this example, I will not be. So let me go ahead and save. Looks pretty good. I've got all of my notifications applied that I want. I've got all of my information for the revision applied at the release date and the transitions going into the release date. Uh, looks like I've got everything set up, so let's save it and test it out. So I'm going to log in to this vault, Trimec Workflows, and I'm going to create a new virtual document. This is essentially my testing document, and I'm going to use the SLD DRW extension. So basically this is tricking the system into thinking that this is a SOLIDWORKS drawing. Let me go ahead and check in this document, testing, drawing and see that this file has gone into the engineering category, uh, or I'm sorry, the category engineering files with the workflow ENG approval process. And we also see that this is in our local state work in process. Now, because the admin is part of uh, the project managers group, we should also see some notifications as well as uh, we have the advantage of the admin using user having all permissions to all states and transitions. So let me go ahead and say that I'm going to submit this file for approval. Let's just say test here for our comment. And we should see that this file has gone to the pending approval state, which it has. Let's go ahead and change state once again. Maybe we're going to say rejected this time around, and we're going to notify the user C. Brooks. Click OK. Let's go back to our submit for approval. And now we are back in the pending approval, and this time around, I'm going to say approved. Okay, looks pretty good. So I can see that my local revision here is a revision A, so my database tables has been updated with my revision bump. Let's take a look at the data card and we can see that the revision here also has updated. Uh, let's go ahead and change state, say new release, and this time what we're going to be testing is whether or not the no approval required will bump up our revision. So if you remember, we have a no approval required transition that should also bump the revision up. So let's go ahead and say we want to use the no approval required. And now we can see that the revision has jumped up on the data card and we can verify that the revision in the database tables also has updated as well. So we have a fully functioning workflow with our transition actions. Um, and we can also see that we have some notifications there as well. So, uh, fully functioning workflow created in under 20 minutes for an engineering files workflow with categories, notifications, and revision scheme applied. Uh, thank you once again for taking some time out of your day to see how easy it is to create a fairly simple engineering workflow approval process uh, using Enterprise PDM.